Hamilton, before anyone jumps the gun, perspective must be exercised when dissecting a preseason game that had more than its share of high-end moments from players who would make an impression. It begins with quarterback McLeod Bethel Thompson, a big, tall, pocket quarterback who has an arm and can deliver the football to his intended receivers. Bethel Thompson finds himself in a tight competition with James Franklin to serve as Ricky Ray's backup. Ray was one of many incumbents who made the trip to the hammer but like many of Toronto's projected starters did not suit up. What Ray saw was an impressive Bethel Thompson, who led the Argos to three opening half touchdowns, producing one on a running major and tossing for two as the tickets shot themselves in the foot by turning the ball over early and often. Remember that in preseason football, teams run what is commonly known as vanilla packages with defenses often running their base package. Still, it's never bad when a quarterback completes 9 of 11 passes and is able to protect the football. Bethel Thompson led the Argos to a 26-6 lead at halftime as Toronto would kick off the preseason with a 36-18 win. Hamilton committed six turnovers in the opening half. Whether it was Tremaine Washington returning an interception 50 yards or Brandon Burks taking a simple screen pass in the flat to produce a 27-yard touchdown when he broke tackles, reversed his field and showed a burst that clearly caught the attention of anyone watching, the Argos looked good. Under head coach Mark Trestman, no stone is ever left unturned, no one guaranteed anything. Toronto's structure was very impressive, the team organized, for the most part, in all three phases, players running to the ball on defense, special teams getting down the field in coverage. Not many penalties would be committed, which also speaks to Trestman and the value he puts on discipline and being attentive and accountable. Overall, the Argos looked good. The Kits, in contrast, looked like a team that needs more work, especially in terms of ball security and decision-making. Johnny Manziel entered the game with 3.38 left in the second quarter with a Tickets trailing 13-6. He completed an outpass on his first attempt, avoided the rush by rolling to his left and completing on the run on his second. Danzel would use his legs when the pocket collapsed and got sacked in the third quarter when the tickets rolled the dice on third down, Manziel getting taken down by Washington. On the same drive, Manziel converted a third down conversion on a rollout. His debut in three-down football did draw a crowd and the buzz inside Tim Horton's field was palpable. At this point, there's no way he'll supplant Jeremiah Masoli. The way Bethel Thompson performed the Argos now must be encouraged at their quality and depth at the quarterback position. Franklin will start in Toronto's preseason finale next Thursday night in Guelph when the Ottawa Red Blacks provide the opposition. As he planned and promised, Trestman started Bethel Thompson Friday night and started Franklin in the second quarter. The roles will reverse Thursday. Toronto did yield a punt return major to Frankie Williams. On Toronto's ensuing offensive series, Franklin's attempted pass down the seam was intercepted by Jaleel Wadud. Mansell's night would feature nine completions on 12 attempts for 80 yards. The tickets went with Dane Evans at quarterback to begin the fourth quarter. After three quarters, the Argos were leading 33-13, the game pretty much decided in the first half. Under Bethel Thompson, the offense ran smoother, but the more Franklin was on the field the more comfortable he looked. Whether it was Bethel Thompson or Franklin, the Argos didn't show anything special, preferring a controlled passing game by mixing in the run and the screen, a weapon that helped James Wilder Jr. break loose during his rookie season last year. Protection wasn't bad, but then again there wasn't anything remotely close to any exotic packages being run by the tickets. 
forgotten in the Manziel mania was how Friday night also ushered in the return of Orlando Steinauer to Hamilton as the team's new assistant head coach and the CFL coaching debut for new defensive coordinator Jerry Glanville. Whether it's identifying Ray's backup or establishing their kicking game, the Argos will have a few days of training camp, the exhibition finale to figure things out. Both Swayze, Waters and Ronnie Pfeffer punted and kicked. There was a missed convert by Waters in the opening half, one of the few mistakes the Argos would make on this night. An offside call on the Argos would be negated when Hamilton moved the chain. Other than a few flags that were thrown against the Argos, the return touchdown, an area that plagued the Argos special teams last season, the Argos had a chance to evaluate their players in a competitive setting against an actual opponent. Dakota Prukup would mop things up for the Argos at quarterback, a second-year player who endeared himself to the team with his athleticism and fearlessness playing special teams last season. Following a two-and-out late in the game, the Argos surrendered a 51-yard punt return. On Hamilton's first play from scrimmage on the ensuing possession, Brallon Addison recorded an interception, Hamilton's eighth turnover of the night. Ficarelli at postmedia.com